bonadigion bonadigesai. Dear Hoch Galon, ich gied am Dodir Senedd Borema, Hilonsio, a Hadrordiad, Kaviander in Gumri, Dros Bobol Gumri. Mein Wedi Board and Anrodi then vowed, he had a lucky a system Kaviander in Gumri. Good morning. We're starting a bit early, and I hope that's the way the justice system will go on. <laughs> May I first thank all who have contributed. First, uh, Kyron Jones for his vision in asking us to do this work, the First Minister and the Council General for their unstinting support, my fellow commissioners who you'll have a chance to interrogate later, uh, who uh, <coughs> Have, who are all experts, and none of us ha have any experience of politics. A and they are all preeminent in their fields. The team at the Secretariat for their long hours that they put in, to Kate Cassidy, who we managed to pull out of retirement to help us, and to what I would regard as my outstanding junior, uh, Rhys Thomas, uh, who has made an enormous contribution to enable us to finish this report. But most important is for me to thank everyone who's contributed uh, to the evidence, who've come to discussions, who've given us so much help. Without you, we wouldn't have been able to do anything at all. And I'm going to ask, in the course of the morning, Juliet Lyon to explain in a little more detail how we did this report. We started not top-down with constitutional theory, but actually seeing what actually would serve the people best. Now, the first thing that I wanted to deal with is our overarching recommendation, and it's simple. Justice should be devolved to Wales. And let me briefly explain why. Contrary to what a number of people failed to appreciate, Wales has its own long and distinctive legal history and a legal tradition. Secondly, the current scheme of devolution which excludes justice is simply not justifiable. It was not the product of any carefully thought through scheme of devolution. It was, in fact, as everyone here knows, the product of the way in which powers had been passed to the Secretary of State for Wales prior to 1999. But what we've got to look at is what's changed since 1999. We set out a number of things in the report, but amongst them are that Wales now has its own distinct primary legislation, such as the one on decision-making by public bodies. The judiciary has a very different role to that that it had in 1999, bearing in mind the functions of the Lord Chancellor have been radically reduced. And above all, as everyone who knows anything about justice ought to appreciate, the justice system is under great strain. And the Ministry of Justice, and it can be illustrated very simply by saying that the Ministry of Justice budget has been reduced by about 40% in real terms since 2009. And there are serious problems in the field of justice. Think what many people don't appreciate, and it's our fourth reason, that the Welsh Government and Welsh local authorities already contribute about 38% of the justice budget. But unfortunately, they have little say in policy and delivery. But most importantly, justice is not an island. It is an integral part of government. You have to align justice with health, with education and social welfare. Now, in England, in Scotland, and in Northern Ireland, the people there have the benefit of that alignment. It is strange that in Wales, they do not. And by retaining an integral part of policy and delivery in London, the current scheme of devolution creates pointless complexity, confusion, and incoherence in justice and in policing in Wales. And you can see that from, I hope, a diagram which we've put on these two screens. Now, that is the complexity and duplication of the current system. The bodies, one side are the bodies that are London government, one on the other side, they're Welsh government. It's completely unnecessary and it's duplicative. So what we suggest will reduce duplication. 
And of course, a system as complicated as this makes for lack of public understanding, inefficient delivery, and poor accountability. Now, I'll return in a, in a moment to say a little bit more about the conclusions. But I think I ought to deal with the underlying matters that led us to these conclusions. And where, as I said at the outset, what we did was to look at the underlying state of justice in Wales, seeing what was wrong, seeing what worked, seeing what needed to be fixed. There's a lot that's wrong and a lot that needs fixing. And can I deal with it under a number of headings? And first, I was going to take access to justice, legal aid and court closures, which are chapters three and eight of our report. Access to justice is, as you all in this room know, a fundamental right, but it's been diminished in two ways. Over the last seven years, very significant reductions have been made in the scope of legal aid, and it is not available for the most commonly occurring problems people have. There's no legal aid for housing disputes, that is to say, until you're, until you're about to be evicted. There's nothing for employment, nothing for welfare, nor is it available to parents on the breakup of a relationship where there's a need to make good arrangements for the children. But what is more striking is that in these reductions, Wales has fared worse than England. In Wales, there was a 40% real terms reduction in civil and family legal aid, but in England, it was only 31%. It shows that the policies are not aligned to help Wales. There has also been, and this is very serious for the most poor in the community, a reduction of some 89% in the number of not-for-profit organisations who provide legal aid work, and a, <coughs> an effect on the poorest and most disadvantaged in our community. Now, a lot is done by the third sector. They provide much advice, but the third sector provision and the legal aid are not properly integrated. And our examination has shown without doubt that funding is uncoordinated and insufficient. And too much time is spent fundraising and not enough time in a coordinated overall policy. Now, I'd like to pay tribute to the Welsh Government for what they've done. They've taken from money that has nothing to do with justice and made a significant contribution. But I wonder, would expect a government to do no less than that because the vulnerable in our society are those who need protection. That's the first way. The second way is the court closures program. And I hope you can see on the screens, yes, two maps. And one shows you what the position was in 2000, the other shows you the position in, uh, to, uh, in 2019. There's been a massive court closure program. Unfortunately, this was done without a strategy, otherwise you wouldn't have ended up with a map like that. It's done without proper alternative provision, because you could have a lot of alternative provision. And of course, there are particular problems, particularly with broadband, in relation to its provision in Wales. And so there's been a diminution in that respect. Now, can I turn to the next heading, which is criminal justice? My, there is a great deal to be done to improve the criminal justice system in Wales. One of my fellow commissioners, Peter Vaughan, will say a little more detail about that later, so I just want to take three points. First, victims. Much more needs to be done to help them. It is, I think, disturbing that 46% of people who have given evidence in court say they would not do it again. It's important that victims are given advice about the sentencing process so they understand and have some empathy with how you're trying to deal with very difficult problems. Secondly, the police. The Welsh Government and local authorities contribute at least 63% of the cost of the police. Of all the components of the justice system, this is the one that needs most integrating with other policies. For example, in the South Wales police areas, 12.3% of all incidents are mental health which is, of course, a devolved subject. And then to courts, probations, and prisons. In 2010-11, 44% of the Ministry of Justice budget was spent on prisons and probation. In 2018-19, this had risen to over 56%. The prison population in Wales is amongst the highest, if not the highest, in Europe. 
We need to rebalance the system and do things differently. Look, for example, what they're doing in Northern Ireland. They've got a problem-solving approach, not soft, one that tries to address the underlying problems of criminality, but actually provides a very tough and, incent uh, and intensive punishment in the community. Women's centres have been long advocated, but nothing's happened. Again, that's something we need to look at. And there's a need to look at, for example, the effect of many things that happen in Wales and look at their effect on criminality. For example, the effect of adverse childhood experiences. So there's a great deal that needs doing. Then, briefly, civil and administrative justice. <clears throat> very, very few can afford to use the courts for civil or administrative justice to challenge government decisions. The system's complicated, and although there are methods of alternative dispute resolution, such as mediation and uh, ombudsman, these, aren't, these are uncoordinated. School exclusion, which play an important, school exclusion panels, which play an important part in many people's lives, are completely outside the system. And there is, we feel, a need and an opportunity for much to be done for a coordinated approach right across administrative justice in whatever form it is dealt with as, and in conjunction with <coughs> um, civil justice. Then let me turn to family justice. The division of responsibilities between the Welsh and Westminster governments is complex. I don't want to go into that, there's no time. But I, there is one very serious issue, and that is the significant rise in the number of looked after children, in effect children in care. And you should have a graph uh, which shows what has happened. It, Wales is now on course to have the highest of the, four, of the four parts of the United Kingdom. Wales is now on course because the Scottish uh, rate is falling to have the highest rate uh, in the UK. Now, it's important to emphasize that the rate of taking children into care in Wales is higher than in any region of England. And so you can't excuse these figures by saying, well, England as a whole. And I think we ought to look at a number of questions. First of all, the costs of taking children into care. They're legal costs. We've set out a bill towards the high end of the scale of £176,000, which was spent taking uh, ch children into care in one case. We've looked at the costs of care across the system. £284 million was spent in 2017-18. And of course, there are the long-term consequences. Regent's research uh, has shown that 45% of mothers appearing as respondents in care proceedings were themselves in care. And so what we feel is that the Welsh Government, and I wish to pay again particular tribute to the First Minister, is really saying this is a problem we simply have to tackle. We need to put the resources in trying to stop people going into care by reducing the number in care. There's a lot that we feel that can be done, developing an all Wales approach through the Family Justice Network for Wales, the establishment of family drug and alcohol courts, and more research to explain the considerable variations between local authorities. And then we turn the next turn to the legal economy, which is chapter nine of our report. Now, I don't think many appreciate that the legal sector is, uh, ex <coughs> makes a direct contribution to the Welsh economy, similar to that of agriculture, forestry, and fisheries together. It's an important economic force. Cardiff is a strong and competitive legal centre, but I think we think that much could be done to strengthen it further, particularly through nearshoring and law tech. We are not recommending any change that would create separate legal professions in Wales. We believe they should remain as they are, a single market that common to England and Wales. And one of uh, my fellow commissioners, Dr. Nerys Llewellyn Jones, is going to speak a bit more about this and deal in particular with the steps that need to be taken in rural and post-industrial Wales to strengthen the legal economy in those areas. And then we deal with knowledge, skill, and innovation. 
We have no doubt that there is a need to nurture and retain the ablest students in Wales at Welsh law schools to ensure the curriculum is innovative and that the curriculum is inclusive, from accommodating the teaching of law in Welsh to law tech, but at the same time ensuring that those who come from Welsh law schools have the opportunity for a career wherever they want to practice in the world, because it is essential we look on our law schools as having this outward-facing reach. We've already made public our proposals for a law council for Wales to ensure cooperation between the law schools and liaisons with the profession. And then the Welsh language. We have looked at this in detail and feel there is still work to be done to ensure a consistent approach to the teaching of Welsh uh, and to the way in which Welsh is treated on the basis of equality with England. Now, can I turn finally uh, to governance devolution and implementation? We very carefully evaluated the alternatives, uh, 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 and Juliet Lyon will explain the process which we undertook. We concluded that legislative devolution, that is to say the transfer of powers over justice, is the only real option if the deficiencies in the justice system are to be remedied and the system is to operate for the benefit of the people of Wales. The other options would merely continue what we might charitably call the sticking plaster approach. Our recommendations will, of course, require a, a legislation, and we think that it should do two things as well, separate the law of England and the law of Wales, and give the Assembly power to establish a separate judiciary in Wales at a time that it considers appropriate. But we mustn't think this is an easy task. And it may seem odd that one of the things we stress is leadership. Good leadership is, in our view, a precondition to success and to building the necessary capacity, capability, and confidence. We think, for example, the justice issue should be dealt with by one minister, and that would depend on the level of minister as to what stage you'd reached in devolution. But we feel there is a real need to strengthen leadership in the civil service in relation to justice issues, but also to make clear the necessity of good leadership right across the whole of the justice system. And then there's another question. What about cost? Well, the delivery arms are all here, the police, the prisons. The cost in respect of those we think will go down if you have a better integrated policy along the lines that I have set out. But there is one point where the cost could rocket, and that is having a policy function in Wales along the Whitehall model. It was estimated to us by the Welsh Civil Service uh, that it would cost £14 million pounds to replicate that model. We regard that approach as wholly misconceived. We ought to do things differently and better in Wales. We should have a small, high-grade team, and they should work jointly with the profession and with universities, and together advise ministers. We do not think there is any sense whatsoever in having anything other than a highly able, small team, 10 or so is probably enough, but which can get its ideas and develop its policy uh, in this way. And then another thing which is critical. What about all these committees? There is no doubt at all they should be streamlined. I'm sure I'm not speaking alone on behalf of, when I speak on behalf of the Commission, in saying that there are far too many, and many are too large to be effective. Now, we started early, and I believe we ought to start immediately, as, the, as is said in our report, while the necessary legislation is prepared for devolving justice. And to help, we've set out a list of things that could be done now, and I mean now. We've said, well, you've got to keep the assembly, has got to keep on top of this, and so we've suggested they monitor it. But there is a time scale we must be careful to look at. In the summer of next year, the eyes of the Commonwealth law will be here in Cardiff. They will be looking and seeing what we're doing. And I hope very much by that stage, 
Much of what we have suggested that is not dependent on legislation will have been done, and there'll be some explaining to do if it's not done. So it's an ambitious programme. It may be radical. It may be a bit of a push, but we really do believe this will help everyone in Wales. We hope our recommendations will be accepted. The people of Wales deserve much, a much better provision of justice. We think it will make a real difference. It will make Wales a fairer and more just society. And, as, I, as we have tried to illustrate, help build its prosperity as it faces what can only be described as a most uncertain world. Thank you. a copy of the report, we're only giving him one because they print it on such heavy paper, but to give him the English version as well would be, would be too much. But thank you very, very much for giving us this chance and for uh, the opportunity to do, have a really good look at what we can do to help the people of Wales. Thank you. Well, one of the again, one of the guests I deal with, Ariane, he did a lot more than that, and a bore of a lot, lot Thomas and the Wade. Uh, it's not often I think that we see standing room only uh, in the Senate at nine o'clock on a Thursday morning. Uh, so I hope, Lord Thomas and uh, your commissioners, you will regard that as a tribute to the work that you have done and the interest that has been generated in it. As I look around the hall. Uh, I'm going to take a risk now of mentioning at least some of the organisations that are represented here, whether that's uh, local government or police and crime commissioners and the police service, uh, whether it's senior members of political parties, senior members of the academic community here in Wales. Uh, the room is full of people who have a direct interest in this report. Uh, here to show that interest in justice here uh, in Wales is as alive and well as you would expect it to be, and that the appetite for finding ways of improving the way that things are done here in Wales is as acute uh, as we would want to see it. Lots of what I have to do this morning is just to uh, say thank you to so many uh, people, and I want to begin uh, by thanking my predecessor in this job, Carwin Jones, for having had the foresight to establish the Commission in the first instance. It was uh, a bold move, because justice is a controversial matter, uh, as well as a matter of great interest. And in the many years that I have been hanging around devolution now, uh, I think I could make a plausible case for saying to you that amongst the most important decisions that ministers ever make are the people decisions that they make. Uh, it's one thing to have an idea about a commission. You can draw up its terms of reference. You can give it a job to do. But appointing the right people to do the job I think is one of the fundamental tasks that ministers carry out, and getting it right and getting it wrong can be the difference between a report that has genuine impact and genuine significance, and one of those reports that simply has its moment in the sun and then gets set to one side. I hope that you will feel, uh, by the time you've had an opportunity to meet and hear from the commissioners, uh, as I have had, uh, that you will agree with me that the Thomas Commission has been populated by a group of people who have the absolute authority that leads to the report that you have in front of you uh, today. That's the result of the decisions that Cadwyn made, uh, and I look forward very much uh, as this report moves from the hands of the commissioners and out there into the wider world that the former First Minister will go on playing the part that he has already in making sure that this report is debated, discussed, 
understood and that the ideas in it are taken forward. So that leads me directly to thank the Commission uh, itself for everything that they have done. The Welsh Government has long understood the issues that are there in the administration of justice here in Wales and the consequent impact on citizens. We have also long believed that some of these problems are a direct result of our incomplete devolution settlement. Uh, that's why it was right to test those beliefs through an independent commission. And the landmark report that you have in front of you today is the most comprehensive examination of the justice system ever undertaken here in Wales. It manages to do that series of things that a report of this sort has as its ambition. It is authoritative in the evidence that it has assembled, but it goes beyond simply bringing evidence together to do that harder job of synthesis analysis and then of drawing conclusions. We are very grateful indeed to the Commission for having considered the justice system in Wales in such breadth and in detail, for setting out with such clarity its own vision for the future. Uh, you will want to hear directly from those who have been involved in all this hard work. Uh, I simply want to say that from today onwards, we will take the time we need to pay the report the tribute that it deserves, to pay tribute to its scope and its significance. And that means that everybody in this room will have an interest in studying this report closely to consider how we rise to the challenges that it sets. It will be the job of government, but not the jo job of government alone to ensure that its lessons are learnt and the wrongs that it sets out uh, are righted. That's a challenge which the Welsh Government will take uh, very seriously, but we will only be able to do what we want to do if we do it in that Welsh way of drawing on the wider interest across the Assembly Chamber, but beyond the Assembly Chamber as well, in the organisations and the individuals represented in this room today. So thank you once again uh, for being here. Particular thanks to the Commission, and I know you look forward now to hearing from those who've been involved in the hard work that lies behind the document you've got in front of you, and to be able to ask them questions about how they went about it and how the conclusions they drawn have been brought together. Thank you very much indeed. Well, um, gan gynta just a tegi a geirier privrido go ddiolch uh, i'r Argloedd Thomas a aelodau eraill uh, y Comisiwn, mae'r um, dadansoddiad manwl iawn o system gyfiawnder sydd yma yng Nghymru uh, ar rôl mae'n chwarae yn sut mae Cymru yn cael ei llywodraethu yn un gwbl ddi gymar a dweud y gwir. Uh, the report is based on an incredible amount of evidence from those who work within the justice system. And what better evidence can you have than evidence from those tasked with making the justice system work in its many different ways? And the broad range of stakeholders and thinkers and commentators and people with first-hand experience who have responded to the call for evidence and provided very detailed evidence I think uh, shows not only that issues must be confronted, but as the First Minister has said, that we also have people very ready to commit to addressing those issues. Um, as a lawyer and as the Welsh Government's law officer, much of my initial interest um, and focus was on constitutional issues um, and the legal jurisdiction and the legal sector uh, here in Wales. And the growth of Welsh um, primary law made by the Senate, the role of uh, the Welsh language in our justice system and the piecemeal nature of our devolution settlement, devolution journey, and the complex interrelationship of the jurisdiction and our legal infrastructure and the divergent law uh, sets a number of objectives for us here in Wales. 
and I'm also very conscious that uh, a Welsh legal system and the justice system more generally uh, needs strong legal professions and clear and accessible law. Uh, that's why I commissioned uh, a rapid review of the legal sector here in Wales to help us as a government understand how in future we can um, do more to support the sector. Um, and I'm committed also to developing a modern Welsh statute book uh, and the Senate recently passed legislation to facilitate uh, that work. But I think what the Commission's work has demonstrated uh, and where it reaches beyond the concerns, important though, though they are, of legislators and practitioners into the lives of citizens in Wales is that they go to the heart of these questions about how uh, the, the state provides services to the, to the citizens of Wales and how government keeps people safe, issues which are uh, live and felt in the daily lives of our uh, citizens. And I think the immense value uh, of the contribution which the Commission and this report has made is that for the first time it has looked at all those interrelated issues together and I'm absolutely confident that its work therefore will help shape the debate and our thinking not just for years but for decades ahead. Thank you very much.